We can analyze language a lot of different ways. If we take a clause, one analysis we can do is identifying the categories of the words in the clause. Another analysis would be identifying the functions of the words and the phrases in the clause. And there are others that we're going to do, but in this course you're going to do at least those two kinds of analyses. One thing that sometimes trips people up is understanding the differences between those two, between the category analysis and the function analysis. To do the analysis, you have to know what it is that you're trying to do. So the purpose of this video is to explain the difference between category and function. First, let's talk about category. Let me say first of all that word category and word class are exactly the same thing. So don't let that non-difference trip you up. Word category and word class is the same. All right, we define the word classes or categories with reference to the syntactic and morphological characteristics of the class. This is different than the way that you're used to thinking about them. You're used to thinking about them probably in terms of their semantic characteristics. So you're used to thinking that a verb is something that expresses an action. That's about the meaning. Meaning is semantics, right? A syntactic or morphological characteristic of a verb would be that it can take a past tense ending. Of course, some of the irregular verbs don't take the past tense ending, but a characteristic of the class as a whole is that it can take a past tense ending, a past tense suffix. If we take the example of a noun, one syntactic way we can define a noun is that we can say it comes after the word the and it makes a complete phrase. So here's the blank after the, any word that you can put in there and then you feel like you've actually said something is a noun. So if you put the very, it's not a noun. Very is not a noun because you don't feel like you finished anything there, right? If you put the very illustrious, you're still not done. You still haven't actually said anything, right? You're waiting for the end of that phrase. You can complete the phrase with one word as long as it's a noun. The president, the very illustrious president. Um, I can put an uncountable noun in there too. The sugar. Anything, anything that's a noun can go in that phrase, can go in that blank, and then you'll have a complete phrase. That's a syntactic definition. Very few definitions work as well as that one. That one's pretty good for every noun. Um, let's look at the next blank. They are very... What's going to go in there? Think about all of the words that go in there and then you feel like you're done. Pretty much any of the words you could have thought of are adjectives, right? That's a syntactic definition of an adjective. We could state them more formally, obviously. With the noun, we would say a noun takes a determinative as a dependent, or a determiner as a dependent if we're talking about function rather than word class. All right, so categories or classes are most usefully defined when we think about where they can fit in a phrase, that's a syntactic definition, or what kind of suffix they can take, that's a morphological definition. And as you see on page 16 of your book, if we ignore interjections, which is a class that's not too interesting to talk about and is small, although fun, there are basically eight categories. So when you're asked to find the category of a word in your analysis, pick one of those eight. Those really are the only choices that you have. Now, when we talk about category or class, the term applies to words but it can also apply to a phrase most often. Most words can become the head of a phrase and the phrase will have the same category. So if we take the word people, it's a noun. We can say the people. People is a noun. If we take the phrase, the indigenous people who lived in the area now known as Punta Arenas, noun phrase. Everything in there is modifying the word people or it's complementing the word people. We'll talk about complements later. Don't worry about that. The, the center of the phrase, the word on which everything in that phrase, which everything in that phrase relates to is people. People is a noun, so the phrase is a noun phrase. Right on the edge of control is what kind of phrase? 
It's all about the word an, really. Right is modifying on, the edge of control is complementing on. On is a preposition, this is a prepositional phrase. Now, there are a couple categories that don't actually become phrases. For example, subordinator. You don't have subordinator phrase. Most of them you do, though. Most of them can make a phrase. Just remember, and this may seem very obvious to you now, but it can get tricky later, so just try to keep it in mind. The category of a phrase is determined by the category of the head word in the phrase. What the phrase is doing in the sentence is the function. It has absolutely no relation to what the category of the phrase is. It's all about what the head word is. And as a side note, um, many phrases are only one word. Just the head word. You don't have to have modifiers or complements or dependents of any kind. As long as you have just the head word, it's a phrase. So if you take this sentence, she immediately introduced me to Lao. The subject of the sentence, this is a function, not a class. I'm going to talk about functions. But the subject of the sentence is filled in by a noun phrase. And the whole phrase is just the word she. Everything else is going to go in the predicate. So the word she is not only a noun, it's a noun phrase. The word me also doesn't have any dependence. It's a noun and it's the whole noun phrase. Those are two examples. A, a verb phrase can also be just one word. A prepositional phrase can certainly be just a preposition. They don't always have dependence, etc. Now, we've already started talking about functions when we mention subjects. The phrases in the clause have functions. Functions are not an inherent property of a word or of a phrase. They concern the relations of words and phrases to each other. Let's draw an analogy that works to some extent. It doesn't work perfectly, but let's think about using Legos to make things. Say we can pick up a Lego that has not been used yet, and it's yellow. Yellow is like its category. No matter what you do with the Lego, it's still going to be a yellow Lego. Now, the function is what you do with it. So, for example, you can put the yellow Lego in such a place that it could be the windowsill of the house. If it's a big yellow Lego, you could put it into the roof. If it's a small yellow Lego, you might put it with other yellow Legos or with other Legos of different kinds into the roof, which is much like one word becoming part of a phrase, and then the phrase takes the function. The analogy I'm drawing is that the class, the category, is inherent to the word, where the function changes because you can do different things with the word in different clauses. So let's take a noun phrase, right? Usually the functions are assigned to phrases and not individual words. We're going to come back to that at the end here. But let's think about some functions that, for example, a noun phrase could have. It's always a noun phrase, but it can do things like this. It could be the subject in this sentence. All your stuff is the subject of just got here. All your stuff is a noun phrase. That's the category. It's the subject. That's the function. Here, all your stuff is still a noun phrase, but it's a predicate complement. That is all your stuff. That's all your stuff. Here, it's a direct object. Put all your stuff. It's the direct object of put. It can be an indirect direct object. Give all your stuff a good cleaning. If you don't understand indirect objects yet, don't worry about that. Just take my word for it. That's its function there. It can be the object of a preposition, with all your stuff. It can be an adjunct. If you don't understand adjuncts quite yet, we're going to talk about that one really soon. They are things that pretty much can appear in, the sent in any sentence that you want them to. Um, for example, last week is a noun phrase. You can think of a sentence where it could be a subject, a direct object, something like that, right? But in this sentence, it's an adjunct. He said last week he will decide by June. It could be 
a modifier of a noun inside a noun phrase. This is the rest of the sentence that we were talking about before, or some more of the sentence. She immediately introduced me to Lal, a childhood friend. Now, Lal is not a noun phrase by itself, right? It includes this appositive noun phrase, a childhood friend. Lal, a childhood friend, that is a noun phrase. A childhood friend is a noun phrase inside the bigger noun phrase. It could have that function. So a category can do different functions, more or less like one color Lego can be used to do different things, to make different things. Conversely, in the same way, one function can be fulfilled by different categories. Just as if, if you want to make a chimney on your Lego house, you don't have to make it out of yellow Legos. You can make it out of red Legos, out of blue Legos. The analogy holds up here, too. Let's go back and take subject. Subject is a function, right? Is it always a noun phrase? No. Different categories of phrases can be a subject. Here are some examples. Let's see. It's not your fault if all your stuff just got here, right? Okay, this is the one that you saw before. This is the one where the subject is a noun phrase. Here's one where it's a prepositional phrase. Behind the lines is where trouble happens. Is is the verb. Behind the lines is the subject. This is a prepositional phrase. I don't see how you could construe it as anything else. Here's one where a clause is a subject. The people are still loyal to them. Shows. Blah, blah, blah. So different f or same function different categories the function and the category don't necessarily correspond to each other of course there are some correlations of course there's a tendency for a lot of subjects to be nouns it's certainly the most common kind of subject but those concepts are separable now back to the question of can we assign a function to just a single word rather than a phrase you can it doesn't happen a whole lot but you can here is an example. Um, we talk, remember we mentioned before that subordinators don't actually make phrases? Okay, so you don't have a subordinator phrase here. If you take this sentence that we talked about the subject of, that people are still loyal to them as a subject, remember? But um, we can identify within that, sub, within that clause that constitutes the subject, we can identify the function of the word that, and it's a subordinator. In this case, we use the same word for the category and the function simply because subordinators can only be subordinators. In this case, the class and the function correlate really closely. Another class that's like that is coordinator and, but, so, or. Okay, in that case, we're going to say that the category and the function have the same name because this category always has that function. However, there are other times when a word that could become part of a phrase actually takes a function on its own inside a phrase, and your book talks about nominals. If you notice that part, we can take a noun phrase like the media frenzy, this is a noun phrase, right? Frenzy is the head word. The is a determinative, that's its category. It's a determiner in the phrase, that's its function. Media is a noun, that's its category. Now what's it doing in the phrase? It's modifying frenzy. Your book, ref your chapter refers to those as nominals to distinguish nouns that are modifying other nouns inside a noun phrase. You don't, that, that terminology is not important. What's important is the concept that you can assign a function inside a phrase to a single word. You won't assign a function like subject or direct object to a single word. Those places will be filled by a phrase. Most of the functions will be filled by a phrase. Incidentally, if you're distracted right now by thinking that the word media is actually an adjective in here, there is an argument against that, and I've presented that argument in the PowerPoint slide on word classes in the site. So review that PowerPoint slide if you're wondering about this, and if it's still not clear, ask a question on the discussion board. Summing up, the class of a word or the category of a word is an inalienable property.
It doesn't change. I will grant you there are some words that fit into more than one class. For example, run can be a verb or it can be a noun. You can hit a run or you can run, right? But the class of a word is not going to change when you put it into a different clause. The class of a phrase is determined by its head word. And the function of a word or phrase can only be determined in usage inside a clause. Inside a clause or inside a phrase. But it depends on how you're using it.